what can we do to influence consumers to make these sustainable choices now? Instead of always saying, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do the efficiency thing later. For right now, my furnace is fine, even though it's a heaping piece of crap. I'll do it later, because I, I need the money right now. Well, alternatively, what can we do to make them more affordable? Why does, why does everything sustainable have to cost so much freaking money? <coughs> Bone structure needs to make some more friends in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're from Montreal, so that's pretty close. Um, I agree. They they have them. There's definitely tax. I just they're not big enough for me yeah. to make that hundred and seventy five thousand dollar jump. But if jump. you're building a house, are you not going to have a bunch of money anyway? Like, would it? Oh no no. Like, use, I don't know the Got to use everybody else's money. <laughs> <laughs> what is, um, I'm just curious the price difference. So like, if I let's say were to build a house today, what would the difference be between the sustainable option and just the regular one? Well, I was basing it on 2,500 square feet, and it would have been 175 grand. More? Yeah, more. Yes, yeah, sorry. Bone structure will cost me 175,000 more. Um, but cost-wise, it, it's going to be financed as soon as I get the foundation in. Right. And I have other people. That's... It, 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 it puts, yeah, it puts me in a position where I do need to have a little bit of extra cash, but it, that's almost irrelevant. I just want more of it back because I'm doing a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't quite understand. You said that the shell is only forty dollars a square foot, right? But it's the interiors that are all. Like, um, expensive. You're you're able to build the shell for forty for forty dollars a square foot if you take their twenty five thousand dollar course. And you're either licensed or can prove you have a certain amount of experience in a variety of these trades. I don't. You have to take the course, basically. So um, but that's that's without finishing. Then I jumped right to if you just buy a house from Bone Structure, you get you customize the design, and when it's done, it's approximately 250 bucks a square foot, completely finished. So um, in my experience, my brother's a builder, and you know in Toronto you're building. The economics to me seem actually quite compelling. Um, but even if it is more expensive per square foot, like you pay twenty-five thousand dollars up front, forty dollars per square foot, yeah. is there another innovation for the inside? Like, are there uh, other weight compatible innovations, or um, sort of, I'm not sure what the term would be, but uh, complementary innovation in the interior finishing? I love the idea of like basically the Lego house. Yeah, it's really I'm cool. I'm wondering if there's a Lego interior version of that that would reduce, you know, make it even more compelling financially. I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess it, if you could like, you could set up a wall to literally like pivot, so you had like an office set up during the day and then it turned into like your kitchen eating area during the, at night. I think that's doable. By the way, the development fees are. I'm I'm basing this on my local area. Like development fees <coughs> and cost of concrete and all that stuff is a lot different in Toronto. Like I can get that a lot cheaper. I'll, I'm not in the sticks, but it's just cheaper. Like in Toronto, it'd probably be at least a hundred bucks more. And builders in Toronto are more expensive anyway. But yeah. So, so the forty dollars a square foot is implying that your time is not worth anything, right? That's if you're building yourself, you spend twenty five thousand dollars, and you can do this. Exactly. Yourself. Yeah, and that's why I have that bullet in there. Time is money. Like I can't. Even if I was skilled, I, I don't think it would be worth the $25,000 investment to build the shell myself. And there's also, I didn't even mention that, because there's just, there's so much going on here. Like, they, they want to keep the, 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 uh, the process proprietary. They don't want people to do that, but they're still offering it. But the other kicker, kicker is you got to do at least six of them. <laughs> so you can't, that, that was why you have to be a tradesperson. Like, you have to be a builder. Otherwise, you're never going to get it for forty dollars a square foot. Of course, if you buy six of them, you're going to get it that cheap. Um, we'll start with probably. So, I mean, I to me, it seems like instead of the government offering tax breaks to individuals who do this, 
it would make a lot of sense for them to pick people coming out of trade school, say, we'll pay for you to take this course, and then put a price ceiling on how much they can charge for labor. Oh, so, that's a good idea. So instead of you building your own house, like let's get some trades people that actually do this for a living, create some jobs, and put some kind of price control on it so that it's still financially viable. Yeah, it would make it a little more competitive. I mean, there's, there's other companies doing stuff that's similar to this. Like, they're not the only one. So let's, okay. let's, let's go ahead. I think the operative word in your question is choice. And that's what I liked about the article, is that when you don't offer choice, when the default is the uh, environmentally sustainable option, more people will not change the default. So I think um, to really affect the way we make decisions is to take the decision out of the equation. So for example, why don't they lobby or work with manufacturers of washing machines, for example, to make the default um, the default on washing machine in cold water, for example, the default on mine is warm. Why is it not cold? Yeah. Because I think the article said 75 or 85 percent of the time will not change the default. So I'm not going to physically push the button to change it to warm or hot. So, so I, I'm not sure how it ties into the bone structure, but well, as soon as the government tells us we, ca we can't keep taking trees down, everybody's going to have to build a bone structure house. It's, you're right. That, that stuff scares me, though, because I don't, like, we don't want to be living in a nanny state. That's what the radio announcers always say. So as soon as the government tries to control everything, they're being our nanny. But, I mean, that, you're right. As soon as the choice isn't there, you're just going to have to get it. It's, Carl. Well, I think, like, for consumers, it all comes down to price. If you have two similar products, uh, you're going to go more, more often than not with the cheaper option. But for sustainability, I think uh, you should try to increase competition by proliferating innovation. So it goes back to the video that we watched last week where everyone's trying to copyright everything. Uh, new innovative ideas in sustainability should be open source. And you look at Tesla, uh, where they actually open source their design and uh, kind of their battery technology and that kind of stuff. Uh, because for Tesla, it's in their interest to have as many different electric cars out there as possible because they're building their own electric gas stations uh, huh. across the US. And they want more car companies to start going electric so that it's no longer uh, you know, the high priced ticket item. It's affordable because more uh, automakers are actually offering it. Yeah. Economics, right? Supp I mean, the more supply goes up, then the, the price is going to go down. Um, it, it, there's, there. I mean, you could do this with shipping containers, really. It's just harder. Like you've seen those houses built out of shipping containers. People are building like apartments and homes. They're, they're pretty neat. Just yeah, I was just what was listening about choice. I was reading that part about the default too, and at first I thought, like you did, we're saying that well, the government's making a choice for us so that. Is it infantilizing us? But as you were speaking, I just realized that we're, it's actually, we're, we, think we're ma we think we have a choice, but the reality is we don't. There is a finite limit of resources, and for us to play pretend that there's not, and that we actually have a choice between being sustainable and not being sustainable is, 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 is created for us by the government or by the economics or whatever, by, and, uh, maybe by ourselves. Like, it's an illusion. We, well, there is only so much out there. So we have to have, we have to make sustainable choices. We just don't, we just pretend, we can pretend to call it something else. But it's so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and wood, you're right though, because wood, we, you can say what you want about how it's renewable, but we can't grow it as fast as we use it. Trees, yeah. like it just can't. Well, and land is an anthony. Like well, in, actually. In, in Europe, like, you know, they, they, I mean, it's easy for a European country, um, Faisan can probably back me up on this, for them to make a default product that is economically, or, or is environmentally sustainable because they don't have any more land. No. They don't have more stuff. We got a lot of land. That's one thing yeah. you have in Canada. So it's, you know, I mean, it's kind of an artificial choice in some ways. Oh, hmm. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Phil. There probably is an opportunity for banks at this point, right? That that $175,000 price tag is not something that I, as a homeowner, is paying up front because I'm financing the project in the end. So if a bank was willing to 
drop my mortgage rate by one or two points as long as I was using a you know, sustainable <laughs> building practice or something. All of a sudden, that bank is probably going to have a lot more people going to them for that service. Yeah, people I wish there was a way them. banks would, because banks' risk is all based on the person and not the building. It's home insurance would probably be a good deal. They can still turn it down. Yeah. I go and say, oh, <laughs> and say no, we yeah. interest. Good call. But, but know, it's, it's $175,000 $175, more, right? But you're right, because I would be going in, I'd be going in asking for a mortgage for two fifty, dollars and it's changed to three, well, three fifty, four twenty five. Yeah, sorry, that took me way too long. So if you can drop me a couple percentage points for that 175 turns into 100 yeah. Over 25 years. Right, less interest. Of an issue for me anymore. Yeah, so and if the government's got behind it, I'm sure we could, like, they could make that happen. Yeah. Do you guys have any sense of how well they're selling? Uh, like a real selling? sense? Yeah, they're, they're selling like hotcakes, right? Well, they're no, but do they have, I see on the website they, they, they have official contractors, so people yeah. are getting involved. Um, and, you know, and motivating a bank would be based on interest and, and a group of people willing to say the desire is there. You know, willing yeah, to I, I don't actually. That's a good question. And it, it, it'd be, they'd have an annual report. Like, they're publicly traded. So, but they're, um, I know that they're doing quite well in Quebec, and that's why they're starting to expand now. And out in BC, they're doing a lot of stuff as well. So, I don't see, I haven't seen anything like this down where I'm at. And that's so interesting, those two provinces where you, like, both of those places are committed to the environment. Quebec yeah, I know. Especially, yeah. and doing things mm -hmm. differently. Quebec, of course, investing in its people. I would never trust Quebec in efficiency, having lived there for nine mm -hmm. years, however. <laughs> Be wary yeah. of them saying you won't have to fix things. <laughs> but these guys are, not like, francophones and they're builders. <laughs> they're not just, like... I, I don't know, I just really, I wish there was more uh, backing on it so that it didn't cost so much, but it's probably what I'm going to end up doing. I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just curious to know, that I'm not, like, I haven't looked into the website yet, but um, is there any permit required? Um, well, yeah, there's building permits anywhere you're building, um, but they're based on size and elevation and, like, height of the house based on the elevation of the property and then they're really not going to pick apart too much how the house looks unless you're in a subdivision that has restrictive covenants it's like there are subdivisions that say your house has got to look like whatever but i'm not there so but yeah there's um there'll be some restrictions on height and stuff like that like these guys are these guys are catering to individual consumers like they're not they do uh, a lot of commercial stuff but that's why i liked it because the article is about individuals too and it's I just think for, for a company um, that can justify an investment and they're going to be around for a long time, it's just easier for that decision to be made than me as a consumer. I want to also point out that it's really great uh, for builders. Like today, like I have my house um, that's uh, actually owned, like my father is a guarantor and he's, he's actually built for a builder, so it's a great way to get builders to get involved, uh, to get all the structures to be involved in. Houses. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it, you got to think about the time, right? For a builder, like that time, there's a thing that we had. Well, actually, Phil brought it up. Who brought, somebody did. But that's for a builder to be able to do it that much more quickly, it, I'm sure it's worth $25,000 mm -hmm. to go through their program and have to take on six builds. Mm -hmm. It's like within a certain amount of time, you have to do at least six houses. And then, whether you put them up or not, you're buying them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, that's a really good point, but I think that <laughs> it still summarizes that us needing someone in the government to do all this lobbying for us. Yeah. I don't know what this has to do with making people want it, but in North Bay they just put up a subdivision, and I would never ever buy one of these houses ever because I watched them get built over the course of the winter, so you know that, that those all those boards and they have swelled and dried and swelled and dried, and it's there's no quality left. So I think like the quality would be like the main selling point. And I'd be curious to know, um, like I know that they say like they last really long and everything, but how strong they are, you know? Um, there's stuff on their website about tension ratings and crap like that. I don't, 
I don't. Under, I'm not actually. Oh, right, because you can put it up so fast. Yeah, yeah. that's a so good like point. When, you, when somebody buys a chunk of land and starts building a subdivision, done deal. Yeah, I, I, I th I'm sure they're, they're barking up those trees, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to get these things pumped out in mass quantity. It just, it, I don't know, when I look at the fact that it's recycled steel, and sp spray foam is a lot more expensive than, than standard vats of insulation. Sorry, Glenn. Oh, no, I thought that was my clock. But I was, <laughs> I, I probably am out of time, am I not? Like, um, but yeah, spray foam, like there are things they're doing that are more expensive, but if this is truly recycled steel, like it's just smelted back into, a, what do they say, galvanized, like why is it so expensive? Like, I mean, it's not their time, they're doing it so quickly. Like I just, they're charging a premium price for a product that not a lot of people are doing yet, right? Phil? It is their time, because it's prefab. Oh yeah, they're, they're, you're right, actually, yeah. You always, <laughs> Phil's always on it, because <laughs> they do, they, they put, I, it's like a, it's like saying why is the band CD so much money, because to me it's no CD costs nothing to make. <laughs> like it's, if you've ever bought racking, steel racking, it's yeah. like expensive as frick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's basically the same. Well, it's a lot more than 2 by 4 I, yeah, it's, it's a lot more than 2 by 4s I can't deny that. I mean, 2 by 4s are... Two dollars and eighty cents a piece, like it's it's cheap. Wood is cheap. I don't know why it's still that cheap because it, it's becoming less and less abundant, but it's pretty cheap. So I think, with respect to our time, we've had a vigorous conversation here. It's fascinating how two of our seminars ties right back to the reading we had this weekend. The topic is not yet. Fully plumbed. I wonder if we should move on to uh, to the next presentation. Let's give. Yeah, for sure.